Today is Cinco de Mayo, and we want to talk about ways to respectfully honor this Mexican holiday and its culture on this day and all the time. And we are continuing this discussion once again by talking with Margarita Maxson. She's an artist who also partners with the Hispanic Alliance of Southeastern Connecticut. She was with us last hour, and in a nutshell, the first thing she told us to do in honor uh, of Cinco de Mayo is to learn. Learn about what the day is about. Margarita, thank you so much for joining us today. How are you again? Very good, Tim. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you so much. Yes. In short, because of course time is short here on TV News, you're basically telling us it uh, celebrated how Mexican forces repelled the French at the Battle of Puebla back in 1862. But then you started touching on why it became so popular in the United States. Can you just uh, fill us in on that again? Yes, uh, the Chicano movement from the 60s and the 70s, they were the, uh, the first generation, sometimes the second generation of Mexican immigrants. So we're talking here about 100 years of immigration or maybe more. So now I, I, I know what, what, what they feel, how it is. Uh, once you leave your country, you leave your homeland, your family behind, you come to a new land. Sometimes you leave everything behind and the only way to get in touch with all that is just to recreate as much as you can the festivities that you may, maybe you never saw in real life. So that's what the Chicanos did. That's why Cinco de Mayo is more important in the US than in Mexico. Many people think that the Cinco de Mayo is a Mexican independence. No, Mexican independence is six, September the 16th, but in the US it's more important because they, the immigrants, the Chicanos from the 60s and the 70s. What are some of your favorite Mexican traditions? You're a part about the culture, by the way. I love seeing some of the artwork behind you. Love seeing the dresses that often come out on Cinco de Mayo, too. Such very vibrant colors as well. Oh, yes. Uh, your first question, for sure, is going to be the Day of the Dead. That's yeah. my, my favorite ever. Uh, and that's, that's Muerto. El Día de los Muertos. That's worldwide known. And uh, about our, our way of dressing, uh, Mexico has thousands of uh, garments for men and women. And it depends the tradition, depends the festivity, and the town, and the, uh, the time of the year is very different. So mm. you can find a, an array, a, big, a huge array of uh, dresses. Yes, and again, it's beautiful, vibrant colors. Please tell us about your artwork as well. My artwork is based in Mexico. Every time I paint and I want to paint something else, I just end up painting Mexico again and again and again. The, uh, the people, the places, and the traditions. It's like like what happened to the Chicanos. We, we, we bring what, what we have from our roots. Mm -hmm. Uh, how, how else would you keep those those roots, those traditions alive, right? Uh, tell us about the upcoming art shows that the Hispanic Alliance of Southeastern Connecticut is hosting as well. Oh, we're going to celebrate the uh, Hispanic Heritage Month in September. Uh, this month was uh, chosen as uh, the Hispanic Heritage Month because many countries in Latin America celebrate their independence in that month for some reason. So. We're going to partner with a Hispanic Alliance and we're going to go to La Grua Art Center in Stonington, an Hispanic Alliance in New London to have two different shows under the same umbrella. Like we are all getting together for celebrating uh, our uh, Hispanic heritage. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have a, a show in there in September, the first and the second week. That is wonderful. Uh, just a little bit more time remaining. Oh, ask this last time around, just want to ask it again. Uh, for people who don't have Mexican culture or heritage, what is a good way we can honor that culture on this day without being offensive or appropriating it? Uh, I think once you learn the story and what is behind the meanings, uh, the common sense takes over. And uh, mm. we know very well what to do and what not to do. It's like. We live here in the north. We know what is a blizzard, by example. So we are not going to go walking to the blizzard wearing high heels. Mm. Something a, like that. 
That is common a, sense. A common sense, a, and a very good analogy. Common sense can take us a long way in any day. Correct. Uh, Margarita, thank you so much for taking the time to join us there from Old Saybrook just to give us a little bit more about the history of Cinco de Mayo and its meaning. We do appreciate it. Thank you, Tim. Thank you.